that was reversed. Alive. And I know that they corrected uh, that. Uh, and then there's another issue that I'm not sure, you know, it's got one of those. And that's what it really is. They're not looking to do that. It's about 10 years ago. I don't know what to do.
Good morning. And welcome to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Corey Alexander Willette, and it is my joy to be the pastor here at St. B. Joining me in worship leadership this morning is Margaret Fisher on the piano. We give thanks for her gift of music and for all of the gifts that each and one of you bring. We might be the ones standing up here in front of you, but we are all here to worship God. And whether this is your first time attending St. B, or you have been here for years, whether you are worshiping with us in person or joining us online, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join us in our call to worship. We have come to worship God, the living God. Teachers, bear witness. We have come to praise God, the Almighty God. We have come to worship God, all gracious God. To receive and carry the word of life and hope. All glory to God. I invite you now to join me as together we say our mission statement. Growing disciples of Christ for the transformation of our community. I want to call your attention this morning to a few announcements that we have. First is that one week from today at 2 o'clock we will be having our trucker treat and blessing of the animals in the parking lot. You are invited to either bring treats, there are boxes located in the narthex and by the kitchen for individually wrapped candy. We'll be putting together treat bags this week. If you want to bring candy throughout the week, you can contact either myself or Margaret and we will be sure that somebody is here to open the door. Regarding the blessing of the animals, you are invited to bring your pet, cat, dog, lizard, parrot, I guess. Whatever your pet is, you are invited to bring them. And if you would like to bring them in costume, that is also absolutely welcome. If you have a pet that does not travel particularly well, you are invited to bring a picture of them. And we will bless them and send you on your way with an animal-specific treat bag. Finally, the SPRC will be meeting this afternoon at 4 o'clock in Heritage Hall, just as a reminder. Are there any other announcements this morning? Seeing none, I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together our opening hymn, hymn number 548, In Christ There Is No East or West. Thank you. 
faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
scripture lesson this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in this one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jesus, or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this, but God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning, we begin week three. This morning, <laughs> we begin week three of our stewardship series on the United Methodist membership vows. And as we talk about gifts, we recognize that each of us brings something different to the table through teaching and assistance and the presence we bring to the financial gifts that we offer. And all of those are sacred gifts. And together, we make up the body of Christ. All right. So I want us to take a minute to do some picturing in our minds. You can close your eyes if you'd like. I want you to picture a city. Maybe one that is a hub for commercialism and religion. One that is bustling with activity. The wealthy overlooking the poor in their day-to-day -day lives. One that appears lovely on a superficial level. One that seems to always be preparing for another big sporting event. 
I'm sure you're all picturing a city. Maybe even the one here in Clarksville with Nashville nearby, and we have seen the growth here in Clarksville as people have left Nashville because of rising taxes. However, the city, while it may resemble our own Clarksville, was supposed to be a description of the city of Corinth, a city that resided in Rome, a city in which Paul established a church probably around the year 50. The congregation reflects the socioeconomic and religious makeup of the city. It's a, it was a place where they were learning what it meant to be Christians. However, figuring that out was, and still is, a challenging task. They were trying to figure out which spiritual gift was the most important. They were trying to figure out who the most important leaders were. They were trying to figure out much of the same things we are still trying to figure out today. The Church of Corinth had written Paul a letter asking him all these questions about what it means to be the body of Christ. So what does it look like to be the body of Christ in all of our diversity? I was recently watching the movie Pocahontas. And in this old Disney movie, the English colonists are invading 17th century Virginia. The movie follows the daughter of the Algonquin chief's daughter. Pocahontas, and the English soldier, John Smith. At the end of the movie, John Smith has been captured by the Algonquins, and the Englishmen are getting ready to go to war with them. Since it's a Disney movie, they begin singing, and the title of the song is Savages, Savages. So you can probably imagine it isn't one of the lighthearted songs like Be Our Guest or Oh, I Just Can't Wait to Be King. Instead, one of the Englishmen sings, They're not like you and me, which means they must be evil. We've been conditioned to fear the unknown. The unknown gives us some anxiety. We have been conditioned to believe that it is difficult to overcome differences in race and gender and human sexuality. By looking back through history, we are able to trace where these differences have been considered evil. The institution of slavery, the genocide of the indigenous population of North America, Jim Crow laws, continued discrimination against members in the LGBTQ plus community, buildings that are not handicap accessible. But in the midst of all of that, we know that God calls us to more. God calls us to be the body of Christ that embraces our differences. Christian unity neither requires uniformity, nor does it encourage it. Because regardless of the ways that people are othered, Christ died for them in the same way that Christ died for each and every person here. God calls us to live beyond the labels we have given others and the labels we have given ourselves. There was an excellent TV show on NBC called The Good Place. And it follows the story of four people who have unfortunately passed away and have entered the afterlife. So we meet Eleanor, who is, who is from Arizona, has been 
mostly selfish her entire life and uh, met her demise while chasing a bottle of margarita mix through a grocery store parking lot when she is hit by a car. Then we meet Tahani. Tahani is very posh and from England. She is wealthy and is involved in charities and is clearly this picture of perfection. This picture of what it means to be good. So they meet in the good place. And immediately, Eleanor starts trying to figure out Tahani's ulterior motives. Tahani is trying to figure out why Eleanor is even there. But as they get to know one another, to truly know one another, their friendship grows and blossoms. And by the end of the series, they are just the best of friends together working to fight for the good of all people. They were able to set aside these initial labels that they had placed on one another. In the passage we heard this morning, we hear possibly one of the most well-known passages in 1 Corinthians. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the poor were to say, because I am not rich, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if a member of the LGBTQ plus community were to say, because I don't fit into the heteronormative standard of the church, I do not belong to the body. If persons of color were to say, because I am not white, I do not belong to the body. If children were to say, because I am not old, I do not belong to the body. If the old were to say, because I am not young, I do not belong to the body. If people with disabilities were to say, because I am not able body, I do not belong to the body. If the whole body were just the people who hold the socio-political power in the country, where would the humanity of Christ be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as God chose. If we were all the same, where would the body be? Roberta Bobby is a professor emeritus of church history and spirituality at Cameron School of Theology at Emory University. And she has this illustration about humanity, which is one of my favorite illustrations. We, all of humanity, is on the edge of a circle. And God is at the center of the circle. And as we move closer to God, we move closer to one another. And as we move closer to one another, we move closer to God. And when we use our unique and individual gifts to be in community with one another, we do just that. We grow closer to God and closer to one another. When we recognize and embrace the diversity of the body of Christ, 
We reflect the diversity of God. Believe it or not, God does not fit into our boxes. God is limitless. God is light. God is alive and active. God is like a mother comforting her children. God is like a bear robbed of her cubs. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. And in God's own image, we are created. In God's own image, we were created to be a diverse group of people. In God's own image, we were created to be exactly who we are. And we all have different and unique gifts that God uses to further the kingdom on earth. And because of that, we can see the beauty in our difference. We can see the beauty that in our difference, we are baptized into the one body of Christ. And together, we have made the commitment to give our gifts to the church. As the one body of Christ, we are called to embrace our diversity, recognizing that each of us brings unique and individual gifts to our community. And I, for one, am deeply glad that we are not all ears or feet or noses or livers. I am grateful that together, we make the whole body of Christ. And so I ask you, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your gifts? If so, please say, I will. I will. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, let it be so. And I invite the ushers forward for this morning's offering. Let us pray. God of abundance, God who has poured out your gifts upon us, we offer them back to you today, knowing that you receive them and multiply them for the further of your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I want to draw your attention to the prayer request on the back of your bulletin. Specifically, we want to remember Anne Irwin and her family after Jack Irwin's passing this past Wednesday. At this time, there are no funeral arrangements with plans to be made in the spring. We also want to remember Mary Nike, who is having some health issues and will be having several tests done in the coming weeks. And so we lift her and Robert and Carol up in the, during this time. We also want to continue praying for Carter, the grandson of Lynn and Christy Robertson and great-grandson of Clyde and Diana Smothers. Are there other joys or concerns we would like to lift up as a community this morning? Seeing none, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this day together for the fall weather we are finally having, for yet another opportunity to gather together and worship your holy name. We know that when we come to this space, we bring an abundance of baggage. We bring the things that have been plaguing us through the week our challenges, our sorrows, our grief. And we also bring our joy, our happiest of moments, the times where we have seen your face this week. Oh God, we lift up to you all of the prayers in our hearts. Prayers in the midst of grief and loss. Prayers in times of uncertainty and for healing. Oh God, we know that you have us in the palm of your hand. And there is nothing we could ever do to separate us from you. We lift our hearts to you. That you may know us inside and out. That you may continue to show us our gifts and strengthen us to use them for your glory. Oh God, you have created each of us in your own image. And you have called us good. And now, as your beloved children, we pray together the prayer that Jesus first taught, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 557, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Thank you. 
depart from this place knowing that we are individuals with our own individual gifts, and yet together we are one in Christ. And so go in peace in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen.